Hello, welcome to another video from Avenue X looking at Chinese Romland in the past week and Happy New Year. We're not officially in the year of tiger. As I'm filming this video on the 4th, it's also the Chinese Li Chun, the beginning of spring. Although it doesn't look like spring outside of my window at all. Last week, we've had many news items on Chinese dramas due to it was the last week before the long holiday. And this week, we've had near to nothing. Clearly, you anticipated that, right? Because everybody is on holiday. But there are still a few things. We'll first talk about those and then talk about something else. First, there was a drama that did one live on February the 3rd. It is an ITE comedy drama called Wa She Jianghu, a set in period time but mostly acted by De Yunshe actors drama. The English title of the drama is The Theatre Stories. It is led by Zhao Xiaotang, who was one of the contestants of the ITE Idol Selection Show. 2020, she's the female lead. And then for all the guys, mostly all come from De Yunshe. De Yunshe is a Beijing based Xiangsheng performancing troupe. They have their own location and they sell tickets, theater, comedy show, traditional Chinese type. So this drama is pretty unique in terms of who are the actors and what type of story it is set in a fictional period time about an young emperor who skipped out of the palace and joined a <laughs> comedy performing theater troupe. And then as this video goes out on the 5th, which would be Saturday, last week we talked about one drama that has released a trailer. Turns out it's the first one that will start airing among many other dramas I've mentioned last time. Yan Yu Fu, the autumn ballad led by Qiao Xin and Xu Zhengxi. Then most of the well-known, well-established big talent agency in China have posted their New Year's ensemble signed artist posts on their social media, including Jia Xing, Huan Rui, and many other very well-known big companies that kind of encapsulate most of the well-known young actors, actresses' names, basically just showing you. We still have these people signed under us, and Happy New Year to them, and to us, and to everyone. So, multiple agencies have done their annual duty of telling you who is signed under them this year. Plus, quite a few dramas have put out their special Chinese New Year promotional materials. Just posters, really. Not saying much about when they're gonna air. Reminding you what here. <laughs> I feel like they probably have timed most of those posts before they went on holiday because on Weibo you can time things and send it out in the future. These are pretty much all the news. Obviously, in China, entertainment Wise, the hottest thing would be the Chinese Spring Festival slot films that are in cinemas right now. Although this year so far, the numbers do not look very uh, promising in terms of how many people have bought tickets, it has significantly dropped down from last year's numbers. Mostly due to actually most of the films have raised their ticket price quite significantly. Much, much more expensive than last year for the same slot. So it put a lot of people off. And we really don't have that much news items to talk about this week. So I'm gonna fill that up with a couple of things. Last time when I streamed, people asked me whether you're gonna make a rent video on the Chinese Spring Festival CCTV Chun Wan, which is the annual Spring Festival variety gala show. Here, I'm gonna tell you, I'm not gonna make a specific video talking about it, but I'm just gonna rent it about it here. It's as expected, but and it keeps getting worse every year, pretty much since the 2010s, early 2010s. It just, every year it gets more embarrassing. There's only one program I would highly recommend people check out, but I would actually recommend people check out another version, not the Spring Festival Gala Show version, which is a dance called Zhi Zi Qing Lui. It comes from a dance play that's been touring China for a while now, and it's impossible to get tickets because it's so popular. And this dancing play is inspired by a very famous Chinese Shan Shui Hua mountain and water painting that was done 900 years ago during Song Dynasty by a very legendary painter, Wang Xi Meng. The cool thing about this painting is first, it's super long, it's 12 meters long, a scroll. Then it's done with a style called Qing Lu Shan Shui, which is blue and green mountain and water painting. Due to using very high quality paints and it's all mineral, close to a thousand years later, it's still vibrant in color. The other thing cool about this is this guy who did the painting was only 18 years old back then. And the more legendary thing about that is 
afterwards, there's hardly any history record about him. Many legends said he died very young, a few years after he did the painting. All stories even go as far as say the emperor killed him for some reason, like nobody knows. The painting was created under the commission from the emperor, and the emperor had very close ties to the creation process of this painting. But afterwards, what happened to the painter is legend. So this entire story about the painting, plus the painting itself, is one of the most interesting painting stories in Chinese history. This program that got put on the Chinese Spring Festival Gala Show, which is about five to seven minutes, just one section of the dance, is one of the most important moments of that entire play. Now, <laughs> the Spring Festival, due to its stage design, has to do different types of lighting and color and background than, say, um, the more theatrical version, if you actually go to the theater performance of this show. And there's a version online that is closer to, I'd say, the design aesthetics of the original play, it comes from Billy Billy, and they had this dance also during their New Year's gala show, which was the December the 31st to January the 1st in China. And I'll link that part of the video in the description. You can go and check out this beautiful dance by this group of female dancers. They basically are emulating the green and blue mountains in the painting and some crazy skills and artistry and Gu Qing playing. Oh, it has every element. Tian Li Jiang Shan Tu, Thousand Miles of River and Mountain, is so iconic to Chinese culture that during the opening ceremony of Beijing's Winter Olympics that just happened two hours ago, if you look at the volunteers within the arena who are wearing those white jacket and then the blue-green pattern on their jacket, it's taken from this painting. It's just interesting that all those things happened very close to each other. The Billy Billy annual show had this dance, CCTV Spring Festival Gala Show had it, and then it's actually on the uh, jacket of the Winter Olympics ceremony. Oh, and then if you watched the Winter Olympics opening ceremony, <laughs> which team's jacket do you like most? Every country has such an interesting and individual design, and it just makes people want to buy them all. <laughs> Canadian kind of wings. <laughs> it's actually a Lululemon brand, multiple layers. You can detach a part off and then put the part on. Like, wow, that's cool. The opening ceremony looks really cool. Zhang Yimou's direction. He really is the king of designing opening ceremonies for huge events. Back in 2008, he directed the Beijing Olympic Games. Now, 14 years later, he also directed the Winter Olympics. Again, very stunning, very beautiful with a lot of crazy technologies. From what I know, it's all real-time tracking with AI technology. When you have people walking on the site and the light follows them or the light changes with them, it's all done real-time. So that will be the end of this video. Chinese New Year officially will still run a few days before everybody goes back to work in China. For everyone who's watching my video who loves snow and ice related sports, you have a big feast coming. I hope you have a great time and happy the year of a tiger. And I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.